Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at Cubes 4.1. This is Release Candidate 4, right after this. Cubes 4, uh, 4.1 came out, well, at least the release candidate. It's been a, a couple of weeks. I haven't really done much to it. But uh, most of what I understand is the release candidate 4 is mostly bug fixes. It's not, they're not introducing anything new into the mix at this point. They're just trying to clean up stuff and get it ready. For those of you who didn't see my earlier video, which has been gosh, almost two years now uh, on Cubes OS. So it's been a while since I looked at it. This is a, a free and open source security oriented system, but it's for a single user desktop. It's not, this is not meant for a server. It's not, you know, it's not meant for that kind of, or gaming or anything like that. Uh, although <laughs> they're, they're working on that. So basically Cubes is based on the concept of isolated compartments and those isolated compartments are known as Cubes. Hence the name Cubes OS. So each cube is implemented in a virtual machine, and each cube has a very specific purpose. So, for example, the first thing you'll notice is there's some color coding. That indicates the levels of trust uh, going from black, which would be the most trusted, to red, which is the least trusted. And you'll notice also, you'll see things like a template VM and an application VM in the center. The, app, the template VMs are where you perform your updates and add software. So if I had things that I wanted Fedora, for example, to offer to a particular VM that I was using, then I would go into the Fedora template, add the packages that I wanted, and set it up the way I wanted. And then the next time I launched the application VM, which is associated with that template, it would then pick up all the updates uh, for me automatically. So that's the idea. The other thing is you'll notice is that there's some other uh, VMs here that look kind of out of place. So the first one you'll see is the Zen hypervisor in the top left and in black. That, that, that plus the admin virtual machine makes up the domain on which you are you're going to administer your cubes environment. Uh, you'll notice that there's also a GUI VM now, which wasn't in any of the previous ones. And that is being used to isolate your um, your graphics hardware from the domain zero. It used to all be in domain zero. The other thing you'll notice on the other side is that they're on the very, on the very last row, as you'll see one called SysUSB VM, SysNet VM. Those are device virtual machines which are used to isolate devices away from your application space. Uh, same with the network. Uh, you have a network stack that is isolated from your application's VMs so that your devices, uh, you can expose or use the ones specific to your needs. Uh, the firewall is for your application VMs. Uh, also, you have... Um, and disposable VMs, which we touched on, that would be you bring them up, you use them, and once you shut them down, they get destroyed. There are There is isolation within the system. Uh, each piece of software that is running uh, is isolated from the others, almost in, in, the, in the same respect as if it was installed on a separate machine. There's, like we talked about disposables already. You can create those on the fly and they can be self-destructed when shut down. The template system uses uh, Cubes apps to share the root file system, and that prevents you from sacrificing security uh, because it, I'm not installing applications in my app VM space. I have a, a, a safety net before I <laughs> actually set that up. And then you can run Tor system-wide, excuse me, by running Hunix. There's additional device isolation. We talked about USB and network cards already. Uh, one other thing that there is uh, is the UTF proxy. So if you want to use two-factor authentication devices, you can do that with the UTF proxy, and that allows you to use those devices connected to your USB stack without exposing them directly to the web browser. So, yeah, so that should help keep things a little cleaner. I'm not saying it's perfect. I mean, no, nothing is perfect. Split GPG allows you to keep your private keys safe. There's a, a bunch of stuff they're doing, uh, a bunch of stuff they're working on. 
I would, I mean, GUI domain is something that has always been inside of Dom Zero. Dom Zero has this big collection of stuff. I mean, it's it has the core operating system, the core device drivers, it has all the memory management, all that stuff. And then there, on top of that, is handling of the graphical user interface, handling of the audio, and all that stuff in the previous versions of Cubes. That's a lot of code. So they're trying to break that out into its own virtual machine. And there's a couple of reasons for that besides besides the obvious, which is to trim down the domain zero. But this, the big reason is, like I said, is eliminating HDMI and DVI protocols from the graphics. But the other thing is that by doing that, that means that they could proxy uh, the graphics hardware to other domains if it's supported. Now, that currently, that isn't supported on all devices. But uh, so consider it a work in progress. There's a number of ways they've looked at doing this. I mean, there's the direct hardware method where you just have the stack over there running and then any requests that come for that have to come to that virtual machine. There's another one where it looks like a BNC client or a BNC server and your application domains are making requests to do that. There's just, But it gets messy when you add all that stuff. What they're really trying to do is, they're, they're, as you can see from this diagram, is they're keeping parts of it in domain zero like your hardware, but then the graphics, uh, you, the GUI domain has the API to talk to it. It is an experimental feature which can be enabled for Cubes 4.1 for Linux VMs, but it won't work for the Windows VMs. They're also doing that same thing with the audio domain. They're, again, the audio code is inside of domain zero, so your Pulse Audio, audio drivers, your hardware device drivers and all that is in there. And currently, Cubes does not support Bluetooth, uh, but by bringing this audio domain out, they may be able to make the Bluetooth devices, particularly the audio devices and Bluetooth, to be enabled securely. There's uh, also work that's being done to help support Gen 2 templates uh, in the Cubes main repos. And so currently, there are three templates for Gen 2. If you're a Gen 2 user, this might be of interest to you. Uh, where you have uh, default GNOME-based uh, uh, templates, and then there's minimal ones, and then XFCE. There's uh, You'll find the Gen 2 templates currently in the Cubes Templates Community Testing Repo, but they're quickly, I, it may already be done, they're moving them over to the, uh, the, the community repo, so... Uh, make it a little easier to find them. Some of the Cubes components uh, in uh, RC4 is Zen is, is uh, based on version 4.14. Uh, the domain zero code is Fedora 32. And uh, you'll if you've been around Cubes for any length of time, you'll know that the domain zero always lags behind. The Fedora 34 template is available to you for application VMs as well as Debian 11. There's Hunix 16 Gateway, which is the server portion of Hunix, and Hunix 16 Workstation. But the Linux kernel version is 5.10 uh, that's available. This uh, diagram over here, just it, it's on their website. You can go look at it in uh, uh, more detail. If you know, I just put it here to show you some of the different types of uh, virtual machine environments that you can have running. Uh, like I said, the red ones would normally be disposable. But you'll notice the work public and then personal and then shopping. Those would typically be... Th as far as system requirements are concerned, you need a 64-bit uh, CPU. So if you're running 32-bit, you're out of luck. You also have specific uh, requirements for Intel to enable the virtual machines. VTX with EPT or AMD 5 with RVI. You also, because you are running device support in here, you also need VTD for Intel and AMD VI. You may also see that in your BIOS as AMD IO. The memory, six gig of RAM and storage, 32 gig is what's suggested. Although, personally, I think that's probably a little tight. Uh, as, as I, I mean, it's, it's probably enough to just see how it works. All the specs are the same except for memory. They're recommending you go to 16 gig storage, 128 gig. They also recommend a, uh, a solid state drive. I'm using NVMe on mine and the performance is Great, no problems at all. As far as graphics is concerned, you can use the Intel integrated processors, the IGPs, but I don't know about the a APUs. They're talking about the, the discrete ones, but I don't know if they have support for the APUs from AMD yet. 
Uh, NVIDIA GPUs will require extensive and significant troubleshooting. AMD GPUs have, have not been really formally tested, but there has been some people in the uh, community that have tested RX 580s and earlier, and those seem to work just fine. Uh, as far as non-USB keyboards or, or multiple USB controllers, yeah, it'll, it'll handle those fine. There's also uh, support for TPM if you have that. Now, if you're running Windows, you probably, Windows 11, you probably already have that. So far as certification of the requirements for 4.x or 4.1, Cube OS development team has, I think they, I mean, personally, I think they've made some vast improvements. Now, in my case, is it because of the hardware or is it because of what they're doing? I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, my experience with some of the older versions of Cubes have been, yeah, it's slow. It was slow. Now, granted, I was running on uh, a, a uh, an Intel Core i7 6770 uh, HQ, I think it was. So, yeah, that that's not exactly stellar performance today. But uh, you know, I'm running on a, a 3800X right now, so 3700X, excuse me. So I'm running on a 3700X today, and yeah, <laughs> with two NVMe drives, so. It's much faster. The uh, I think the project has clear direction on where they're what they're trying to achieve. Uh, I I remember reading the architecture looking forward plan they had from I think it's almost ten years old now. Uh, yeah, twenty twelve I think is when it came out. So you know here's the problem though. I mean it's it's great to have plans to do things, but sometimes trying to realize those plans, there are steps you have to take to get there. Right? There's baby steps you got to take in order to get the architecture in place in order to be able to support where you're trying to go. So I think that's what the project team has been working on. I don't think they've just been sitting back and, you know, going, well, we need to get to that and maybe we'll do that. I don't think it's, it doesn't, I don't think that's been what's going on because you can clearly see that they have been pushing Cubes OS toward that direction on every, every release they've worked on. You can clearly see that and they're continuing to do that. So it appears they are executing to it. Um, yeah, I think I think kudos to the project team. They're doing a great job. I'm curious as what they're going to do with Pipewire once it becomes available in the DOM Zero. Let me know in the comments below what you'd like to to see. I am going to do a full, a full review on the operating system once it goes to release 4.1. I so far my experiences with 4.1 RC4 have been really great. I have it installed on a Samsung 980 uh, Evo. Uh, I think it's a one terabyte. It seems to be performing just great. That's a, that's really the good question. When they get all these extra VMs up, now the intercommunication traffic should still be pretty quick between the VMs, but I wonder how much additional load that will actually add to the system versus, you know, is, is it, there's always a trade-off between multiple VMs or having it in one. So anyway, that's all I had for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you in the next one, and bye for now. Oh,